This screencast is aimed at those who might know about routing from wheels one, but haven't yet jumped ship to wheels two or might be in the process of upgrading their apps. When moving an app from wheels one to two, the biggest hurdle you'll probably come across is the new routing system. Obviously, we didn't decide to change the routing system just to give you extra work. There are great benefits for this uh, new routing system, which I hope to go through, but it does require learning a few new concepts. In wheels one, you might have had quite a lot of routes using the add route call, or you might have fallen back to the standard controller action key defaults in wheels. So the first thing to note is that add route has been completely replaced by a new system called mapper. All of your routes are set up within mapper using chaining. Mapper has many chainable functions such as get, post, patch, put, delete, etc. Um, and you can always see the full documentation for mapper at api.cfwheels.org. So in a new installation by default, you'll only have two things in your mapper block. You'll have a wildcard call and a root call. And there'll also be an end call signaling the end of the chain. Root is perhaps the simplest one to understand. If no root is matched in the block it's found in, then it will get called. So in this case, we are changing the home page for the website to pages and home. This two syntax uh, is pretty pretty useful shortcut. So you have the controller on the, on the left and the action on the right with a double hash in the middle. You'll probably be using that quite a lot. You can actually have more than one root call in a mapper block, but we'll come on to that later because it deals with nesting routes. The wildcard route is there just as an initial convenience. It mimics the default controller action behavior from wheels one, but only for get requests by default. If at this point you're really desperate to replicate the old CF wheels one behavior, you can actually add some parameters to this wildcard call to replicate that. So it looks something like this, where we implicitly pass, pass the get and post methods into the wildcard call and use map key to give us the uh, key part of the URL as well. Um, however, you know, this is not recommended. The main reason is security. I mean, if you take a URL like admin users delete one, which deletes user one via a get request, if you were logged in as an admin to your app and you clicked on a maliciously crafted URL in an email, um, because you're logged into the application and it just needs a get request rather than a post or a delete request, if you clicked on that link and the browser opens and user one has gone. So whilst wildcard might initially be useful to get things running, it isn't actually a great solution and it opens up too many endpoints in your application. So let's add some routes for our typical CRUD controller using our users example, which we covered in the previous screencast. In wheels two, there are seven main actions you should be using in your controllers. Index will be our main user table. Show will allow us to view an individual user. New will load the new user form. Create would create a new user, edit would load the edit user form, update will update that user, and delete would delete it. If you stick to these conventions, you'll find your controller code is more consistent and other developers will thank you if they ever have to pick up your code. And you may even thank yourself six months down the line when you revisit it. In wheels one, you might have had about seven different URLs to access this equivalent fu functionality. In wheels two, we use HTTP verbs, so we can actually minimize the required number of URLs from seven to only four. So we can go from this to just having this. So forward slash users in this case, if you did a get request, would get the index, but if you did a post to forward slash users, you would create a user. And likewise, if you did get to users slash one, you would get the user or show the user rather. Uh, if you put a patch request to that URL, you would update that user. And if you want to delete it, you guessed it, delete request. So this is how it approximately matches up from a wheels one to a wheels two application. So you can see we've got the same functionality, but just on the right hand side, we've got more verbs and less actual URLs. So thankfully we don't have to create all these individual URLs uh, we can use something like the resources helper. If you look at the table on the right, you'll see each restful action is matched to a conventional action in the user's controller. 
So resources allow us to very quickly add routes for controllers with just a single line and get all this CRUD functionality. Resources also accepts some arguments. For instance, we might want to restrict the actions to just show an index, or we might want to have all the default, default actions except the delete action. Resources are designed to be used with anything which has a primary key. To get the same functionality without the key bit in the URL, you'll need to use resource singular. An example of where you'd want to use resource versus resources might be something like a shopping cart where the cart itself is stored in the user's session. So there's no primary key associated with this. It's quite individual to that session. Resource also only exposes six routes rather than seven because there isn't an index to use. Whilst resource and resources cover a lot of our default functionality, there are always going to be times when you just want to add a single route without defining an entire resource, or you just want more control. So in this block below, you can see examples for a simple get request, which goes to the new action in the sessions controller at forward slash login, a post request, which might accept the uh, contents of a login form to create the user session, a patch request, which might trigger perhaps via JavaScript every 30 seconds to keep the user logged in, or uh, if the user is logging out, we might send a delete request because we're going to delete that session. Perhaps the best way to understand routes is to actually start using them. So this is our app that we created in the last screencast just using the command line interface. And we didn't go into too much detail about what that command line interface actually created. So here's the config roots.cfm file. You'll see that the CLI has automatically inserted a resources call for users. So we now need to check and see what, what routes that's actually made. So thankfully, if we go to our, our app running in, in command box, we've got a really handy route list. You can access this down in the debug section by just going to view routes. So this is a pretty useful list because you can, you can filter it by type you can sort of type as you search for whatever it is you're, you're looking for, um, because this list can get pretty long. <laughs> so this look should look pretty straightforward. This is the, the end result for our resources call. There's also additional format patterns here. Um, you can sort of ignore those for now, but they are for when you want to start accessing your controllers and your routes with different actual formats like .json or .xml. Back in our project, we've still got the root call in our roots function pointing to the wheels controller, which is the, the congratulations page. So let's start by simply changing this to our users index. And let's check that's worked by going to view roots. And we're going to need to reload when we change roots. So let's do we're going to append the reload password onto this URL. And as you can see down the bottom, we've got root forward slash is going to users index. I think as well, we're going to just take out this wildcard just so we can clear, clear things up a bit. There we go. So now if I go back to the root of my website, I should, yep, it's straight to the users index. One of my favorite new features in the new routing system is the ability to organize your controllers and your code a little more efficiently. So we're gonna have a quick look at moving this whole user's resource into a folder. Um, so we're gonna use the namespace function and we're gonna call this namespace admin. So what we're gonna do is basically have, uh, we might have multiple resources in a namespace block and if we just go and have a look at the roots, what has that done? So the first thing to note is obviously that the URL pattern itself has changed to forward slash admin, which is pretty cool. Uh, but also the root names themselves have changed as well. But the controller, as you can see, is going to be admin dot users. So if we go into the file system now, we can do a little bit of reorganization to get this to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new folder within controllers and I'm going to call it admin. 
Oops. And I'm just going to drag in users to that. Next thing I do is do the same thing for the users folder down here. So that's all working. And back in the code, we just now need to go into the actual users controller. And as you can see at the moment, it extends controller, but the problem is obviously it can't see controller because it's down a level. So we can now use a new feature in CF Wheels 2, which is an automatic mapping. So we've set up app as a, as a web root default. So we can do app.controllers.controller. And no matter where we put this users.cfc now, it will always extend the root controller. If we try to go to our new admin section, you'll notice we'll now get wheels root not found errors. This is because those root names have changed. So we just need to go and update those. So we're going to change this to new admin user. And for the edit link, this is just going to be admin user and edit admin user and admin user there. And now if we reload, everything's back to normal. One of the advantages of this namespacing approach is that we can actually change the uh, namespace URL path without having to then reorganize all our folders. So if I wanted, for instance, to change this to not forward slash admin, but I wanted something else. So let's try I know, path my admin. If I reload the roots now, you'll see my admin forward slash users, but the root names are still admin users and the controller and where the controller is is still the same. Likewise, if we actually change the location or the name of the admin folder, we can override the, where the namespace looks for the CFC using the package command. So if I do package equals somewhere else and I go to my roots, you can now see that it's pointed it towards somewhere else, dot users. So we can just rename the folder. And again, we don't need to go and rename all those roots again. Another nice trick is if we want to organize our CFCs and folders, but we don't necessarily want the folder names in the URL at all, we can actually use the package helper. Oops. If we lo reload our roots now, you can see we've got the same root name of admin users. We're still looking for the admin dot users controller, but our URL pattern has gone back to forward slash users. One last useful trick is sometimes you might have a custom action which doesn't fit the restful actions in your controller. So for instance, in users, we might have a function called profile, which may return only certain fields or have a different display. So for that, what we can actually do is nest a resource within resources. So we're going to give this a name and we're going to put nested equals true. We're going to end the block. And then within here, we're going to call a new function called member, which basically says to us, uh, call it on users with the prime, you know, with whatever primary key you're pushing through. So now we're going to put a get request and we're just going to call that profile. So if we look back at our roots, we've now got admin users key and profile, which is going to go to the profile action in the users controller. 